This is a 1999 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic and just recently broke down on me. What it did is it was running perfectly. I stopped somewhere uh, and then when I went to start it back up, the starter did nothing. But what I noticed was it's not the starter itself because we even tried to push start it. The radio does not light up and this tack does not light up. Everything else seems to light up. So you can hear my engine light went on. You can hear that the, uh, the EFI for the uh, fuel pump came on. And every once in a while when I turn this ignition switch, just right, the radio would come on and this tack would come on. It's not doing it right now. So I ended up having to tow it home. So the starter, when this happens, does nothing. The kill switch does work. I turn it back on. It's not the kill switch. So I'm not sure I've heard, seen other people do this. So what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna take off this front fairing because what I'm guessing is there's supposedly three wires coming out of here. And I'm guessing that those three wires, there's a problem in them somewhere. One of them. So let me take this fairing off real quick. I'm just starting to remove the fairing and there is one Torx screw here that I just removed. I don't believe I have to remove these three. And there is one on the other side right there that I removed. And now I'm just going to remove this windshield, the three screws. They're just Phillips. I don't know if I have to remove this light bar. It looks like it's gonna be in the way, but let me find out after I remove these three. Okay, I just removed the windshield and the three screws. And then, not sure if there's another screw down here or if it's just hitting this light bar. Yeah, I definitely think I have to drop the light bar. These are also Torx. I'm just gonna remove the bottom one so the light bar will just kind of fall down a little bit. is all a little bit hooked together here. Take off the connector for the headlight. And the light bar is actually using the same bottom one was definitely part of the light bar um, holding this on, this fairing on the bottom. I just have to get the wiring around here unless I can disconnect this light bar. Looks like it might be this connector. These connectors don't want to come off. This is a fuse. And then this one. Okay. All right. 
So now that that's off, it exposes this whole thing. All right, I'm gonna come over here for a second and go back to see if I can get this to work, moving some of the wires around. So right now it's not working. That's not doing anything. Let's show this relay. Well, not really a relay, it's the wiring harness for the three wires. It's right here. And let me just show you what this looks like. So this is a photo. This is your ignition switch. There's the three wires. And when you're in ignition right there, it goes to all the fuses. That's what I think is going on is either one of these fuses is has a bad connection or um, one of these wires. It's these three wires right here. So... These three wires right here go to a relay. They go to this relay right here. <clears throat> and it looks like they split off and go to another connection into here. So I'm gonna check the fuses real quick. don't know what these other two wires are but let me check this connector right here this relay and see if it's clicking definitely hear it clicking I'm just gonna tap on it with a screwdriver It's not doing anything. Let me see if I remove that, if it still gives power. It does nothing on ignition if I remove that relay. So this relay is definitely working. Whether all of it's working, I'm not sure, but. All right, let me check the fuses. All right, it looks like I'm gonna have to take off this side bag right here in order to get to the fuse panel because the fuse panel is right here so there's a couple clips you just turn them there's a washer and just a quick release there's two of them take those off and the bag should kind of slide out I got it away. Now I should be able to take the fuse cover off. All right. Flashlight's not working. Alright, this is the fuse block and it's 1999, but it should actually pop out of here. One side. Alright. 
this is the fuse box. Um, it just slides on these two tabs here. You just kind of wiggle it off and then the cover. Oh, man, this thing really hard to maneuver. This cover should just come off if I can get these two tabs out of here. So this is the cover, and uh, here's all my fuses. It looks like somebody's got this green wire jumper through this fuse, so I'm gonna have to check all these fuses. I'm just gonna bring this up to show all the different fuses that are on here. I'm not sure if it's this one here that says lights, the fuse is missing and it's just that green wire. I'm not sure what someone did on this bike. Let me get a closer view of it. Whoops. This green wire here, it just bypassed the fuse. And I'm not sure where that green wire is going. It goes under the seat. And to test these fuses, I'm just gonna um, use a ohm meter. And here's that green wire. I'm really not sure where it goes. If it's up here anywhere. But let me check the fuses first and see where what's going on if any of these fuses are bad before i do anything with the fuses i'm going to just turn it on real quick now that i touch the fuse block yeah see stick, same problem radio is not coming on and tachometer is not coming on so now let me check these fuses out A little cold in this garage. All right, turn the This is volts AC, volts DC. Let's see if I can get a reading on any of these if they have voltage all the time. Find it. Ground. I have voltage on there. Let me get this set up a little better. It should be good ground. All right, got twelve volts. 12 volts, no voltage, no voltage, and this, this one's really loose, no voltage, no voltage, no voltage, no voltage, so only one fuse has voltage at 10 amp, let me turn on this bike again. Okay, back to this one I know has voltage. Right here, 11.8 volts, 12 volts. Nothing on this 10, nothing on this 15, nothing on that, any of those. That 12 volts there, 12 volts there. And nothing there. Got 12 volts on that side. I don't have any idea what this is. 
this green one, there's no voltage on the side that you connect it to, and there's voltage here. So, I don't see any bad fuses. But I'm wondering why this 10 amp isn't even powered up. Gotta figure out what this 10 amp does. This 15 amp has no power. And this 15 amp has no power. Let me see where the cover went. So I don't know what PNA is. That's what this says, PNA, 10 amp. That's what this one's supposed to be, it's a 15 amp. This one is a 15 amp, it says brake cruise pursuit lamps. This 10 amp says it's for the radio and siren. 15 amp says radio memory. These ones over here that have no power, this one's ignition, gauges, then lights, and accessory. So I gotta figure out why I'm not getting voltage to the fuses now. Okay, we're back on the front. I'm going to th the three connectors right here. There's three wires. It's the far right. I have 12 volts. The far left. I have 12 volts, 11.9. In the middle one, I have no voltage. And the ground came off there. So I have voltage on the far right. Voltage on the far left, but nothing on the middle wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out the middle wire and see if, if I jump this, if I get voltage there. That would mean I guess my ignition switch is bad. Let me check that. Okay, hopefully you can see this. You see here, I ran a jumper. I know it's a big jumper. I'm trying to get some of this stuff out of the way, but I got a jumper from the far right to the center one. The far left is constant voltage. And let me come over here to the uh, dash. So now, let me turn this on. Now I've got voltage on the radio. Let me see if my starter works. Am I in neutral? Yes. Yes, now it starts. Okay, that was our problem. You can see the tachometer is now lit up. Um, there's got to be a problem either in this switch. I'm guessing it's a switch. I don't see how the wires could uh, break, but I'm going to have to take that wiring connector apart. So hopefully this video helps someone else. Um, I've got stranded on the road. I wouldn't have been able to take off this fairing out on the road very easily. Um, so get you a better picture of this harness. So if I take this back out, I'm gonna take that out. I've got these three wires here. That's my ignition wires. This far left one is 12 volts constant. The middle one is the one I'm not getting voltage to, and the far right one's accessory. So I just took out that jumper. I'm gonna come back over here. Dead again. So let me uh, go put that jumper in real quick.
there's the jumper. I see my lights all came on when I did that. And I noticed when I was out on the road, my lights didn't work or anything. So this is working. Here's my starter. Let me take the jumper back out. Push the starter. You can hear it clicking, but it's not doing anything. Kill switch works. But nothing. Now I put the jumper back in. Jumper's back in. Now I can start it. Kill switch still works. I can still shut everything off. Everything still comes on, but in accessory mode, it's all dead. So if you run into this problem, that's what it is. I'm guessing these fuses only get power They must only get power when that uh, accessory and that ignition is going. So I'm going to show you one more time on, um, on my other phone here, the picture. Of that accessory. So on this photo, it should be the far right, or I'm sorry, the far left is your, uh, let me see. Nope, the middle is constant power on this, but this shows the ignition switch, and it's that, just those three red wires there, and I'm missing the far right one, which is my ignition, and I'll leave a link to this photo. Um, this says 1997 all models, but... That's the photo I found to try and figure this out. And like I said, it it won't even start it. We tried to push start this, it won't even fire because without power to that wire, you can't get any ignition. This one's fuel injected. So I was basically dead. And uh, I'm gonna take this apart next and see where the problem is. I don't know if it's further down the line there. So I need to check that. All right, took apart this connector and it does have some corrosion in it. You can see the corrosion here, but that's not the problem. I've got continuity between the far left and the far right. This should just go right to the key switch. There's a red with a black another red with a black stripe, and then a solid red. This one has maybe, that might be blue, might be red with blue and then red with black, but the red with blue is the one I have a problem with. I just did an ohm check on this. It's definitely not this connection, uh, so it has to be my key switch. So now I'm gonna have to take out the key switch, which, uh, should kind of come off. There's supposedly like a button underneath here. Um, and you take this off with your key. Let me see if I can get it off. I've got to get a little screwdriver to push on the, the button that's underneath here. All right, I'm going to try and take off this panel here. See if that gives me access. Nope, that panel can't come off unless this key's out. So 
So, I'll try this again. Okay, I think the tab is right here. That's it, it's not coming off. Okay, the key looks like it turns a little more. Let's see if I can get in there. I don't see a little lock on there, but the key did turn much more. This is the regular lock here. No, it doesn't want to do it again. There, he turns all the way. It just doesn't want to come out. It's definitely unlocked. Let's see if I can pry it off here. I'm not sure why it's still holding it. But I definitely was able to push in that button, which let me turn the key all the way around. There, it came off, jeez. All right, it's out. This is that little trigger I was trying to push that allows the key to come all the way around. Now I should be able to take this off. It doesn't open it up. Okay. Now this should have a spring on it. Hopefully it doesn't just launch off. All right, we just gotta make sure this goes down. This is the spacer. And I don't know if this just pops up. Sure, this can be a lot more fun to put together. Let's take apart. Oh, there now that piece comes off. It doesn't give you much room with this wiring. These older models don't have the uh, quick disconnects on the wiring. See if I can get this ignition out. Okay, I'm gonna try.
try and bring you in here. It's really hard to see, but there's a Allen screw right there on each side of the ignition. So I'm gonna take those two Allen screws out, pull this ignition out, and then check the wiring inside there. I'm guessing that the ignition switch is bad. Sorry, I don't know what size Allen this is. I couldn't read it, but this one fits. I think it's a 3 16 but this thing is in there really tight. It almost feels like it's tightening it. But it has been in there 24 years. And this is actually the side I can get to. The other side's the one that's going to be a little more difficult. Let's see if I can get this out of there without dropping it. I think I'm going to lose that washer if I try to take it out. This side, there's these wires are in my way. Let me see if I can get in there. I'll just show you what I'm running into. There's the other one. And these wires don't fit between the back side of the ignition. That one's out. And I just got to get to the other one. I got it on there. I got to try and get it to turn. And I apologize for sniffling, but pretty cold out today it's about 30 and there's no heat in this garage it would probably help if I had a t-handle allen key This one's still in. That one's definitely out. All right, got it. Now I gotta kind of fish that wire through. All right, there it is, finally out. This is uh, definitely got to be the problem because when I turn the ignition on, it's not closing this circuit. So uh, I'm going to have to get a new one. This one does not look like it's serviceable. I don't see any place that it opens up. It looks like it's sealed. Uh, this right here is the lock. So let me see here. There's a look at it inside there where it locks down. So I'm gonna leave all this and order the new part and then get it put in. Well, I was wrong. I didn't even see these four screws on here. So maybe this is serviceable. Let me take this off real quick. Let's see. Give me a Phillips screwdriver. And again, this was not intermittent. This didn't just happen. I, I was, 
Everything's been working good on this bike. And this just happened out of nowhere. Everything's going to explode out of here or what? Okay. Well, there's the inside. It looks like it's just got a lot of grease in there. Definitely doesn't look like anything I can fix. I'll maybe try to clean it up. I don't know. I'll see how much this part costs. But uh, I don't see anything that I can repair in here. All right, if I had to pry this bottom cover off here. There is a clip right here, but I could not get that thing off. There's the wiring coming in. It doesn't look bad. It looks like it's still got solid connections. Let's see what happens when I take out these two screws. Don't see how this still comes apart. Yeah, looks like it has three contact points. And I mean, there is just so much grease in there. Let me grab my, sorry, my flashlight broke. So I'm using my other phone as a flashlight. There's just so much grease in here. There's the three connections, and you can kind of see the amount of grease in there. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to get a new switch, and uh, it says 8203 on here. Let's get a new switch and see how it works, but this was definitely my problem. I mean, I can ride the bike if I just hot wire it, hook these three wires together, but right now... I'm just planning on putting it back together. It's still just uh, February 29th, so can't ride much anyways. We were riding the other day because it was like 65 degrees outside. So again, this is a 1999 Ultra Classic, and I just wanted to show a video on what happens if you've got partial voltage and that it could be your ignition switch.